What's up, everyone? I'm Coach D. Listen, there's nothing you can tell me to convince me that Kamala Harris does not know how to dominate and command an interview with any of these journalists. There are a lot of things I like about Kamala Harris. There are a lot of things about her policies that I like about her. But what I also like about her is how she conducts herself in these interviews. She comes prepared, she's ready to, to tackle the issues, and she doesn't take any BS from them. So she was asked if she would be willing to give Donald Trump a pardon if she were to become president. And she basically says, you know, I'm not going to go into these hypotheticals. I'm not going to, you know, say anything like that. And, and I think she does that to basically say, hell no. I'm going to allow the judicial process to do what it does. Because Donald Trump does not deserve a pardon. The man was convicted for over 30 felonies. The man still has pending trials out there. There are so many more things that are going to come up if he does not become president. There is no way she would want to give him a pardon. He does not deserve a pardon. Nixon did not deserve a pardon. Donald Trump does not deserve a pardon. And I love the way she answers this question. Is there any part of you that subscribes to the argument that has been made in the past that a pardon could help bring America together, could help unify the country and move them move on? Let me tell you what's going to help us move on. I get elected president of the United States. It is entirely possible that the federal court cases against the former president will continue on. He is, of course, facing those felony charges. Would you consider, if you win and he's convicted, a pardon for former President Trump? I'm not going to get into those hypotheticals. I'm focused on the next 14 days. But do you believe, is there any part of you that subscribes to the argument that has been made in the past, that a pardon could help bring America together, could help unify the country and move them move on? Let me tell you what's going to help us move on. I get elected president of the United States. A pardon would not unify the country. It would not make us move forward. A pardon would teach a small percentage of Trump supporters that it is okay to, make, to commit crimes like fraud, sexual assault, stealing classified documents, and get away with it without any accountability. That is not what we want to teach people. These people need to be brought to reality. They need to understand the gravity of the things Donald Trump has done since being president and even before then. So no, there will be no pardon. And I am so happy that Kamala Harris made that clear. In this next clip, she's asked about concessions for, you know, abortion. And she's like, there shouldn't be any concessions. And, and again, the way she handles the question, the way she answers it, and you could tell, you could look at her and you can tell she is visibly a little bit annoyed by the fact that she's being asked this question. But she is, and she handles it very well. So is a question of pragmatism then, what concessions would be on the table? Religious exemptions, for example, is that something that you would consider? Like I don't think we should be Congress? making concessions when we're talking about a fundamental freedom to make decisions about your own body. To Republicans like, for example, uh, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, who would back something like this on a Democratic agenda if, in fact, Republicans control Congress, would you offer them an olive branch? Or is that off the table? Is that not an option for you? I'm not going to engage in hypotheticals because we can go on with a variety of scenarios. Let's start with a fundamental fact. A basic freedom has been taken from the women of America. The freedom to make decisions about their own body. And that cannot be negotiable. And let me state something that I have said a few times already. This idea that moving the right to abortion from the federal government to the state government is a good thing might be one of the dumbest arguments I've ever heard. To think that you think that taking the, 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 the choice from the federal government and moving it to the state government is a good thing makes absolutely no sense. Women don't need government at any level telling them how to make decisions for their body. I don't want the federal government doing it, the state government doing it, the local government doing it, or the neighborhood doing it. The only person who should be making a decision based on a woman's body and their right to choose is that woman. 
period. Don't want no enemies or ops. Envy in their heart, I tell them stop. Vacation on the yacht.